Hey there, welcome back to another Adobe Illustrator tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at knockout groups, one of the most powerful tools for dealing with transparency, but one that's a little bit hidden and with a couple of caveats that we'll touch on towards the end of the video. For now, to get started, you'll need some sort of a background. I'm just using the space scene that I created in the last set of videos. If you haven't seen that series, there's a link down in the description. For this though, I'm just going to start off with a new blank layer. You'll notice too I've also got all of the background layers locked so I don't accidentally select them. We'll name our new layer knockout layer and I'm just going to create a rectangle that fills the entire artboard and on top of that I'm going to create some text. So I click the text tool and just click once. You don't want to click and drag because that'll create a text box and type in some text there. If you created artistic text. You should be able to just hold shift and option key or alt on Windows and scale that up. If you did click and drag and got a text box, not to worry, you can just double click this little circle to change it. I'm going to go ahead and set this up so it's aligned to the center. And then I'm also going to use my horizontal and vertical align centers. For fonts, I'm using Futura PT Bold and this come out to about 167 points. We've got everything that we need to set up our knockout group. So I'm just going to open up my layer and you want to make sure that the background and your text is selected. Hit command G to group them and we can go ahead and double click this to name this knockout group and hit enter. And I'll go ahead and expand this. So basically we've just got our text and we've got our background or our rectangle. We need to activate knockout on this. And there's a couple of different ways that you can get to this either from the transparency panel or from uh, transparency here in your properties menu. If you go into properties and just click on opacity, you should see knockout group right here. And it's got a little dash in it. We'll click it once to turn that on and nothing happened. And we'll see why in just a second. But real quickly, I want to point out that if you go to the transparency panel, you may not see this. By default, this transparency panel is actually collapsed. So if you go to look for your knockout group controls, you're not gonna find them. You literally have to click this little arrow twice to be able to get to the knockout group controls where you can see that's checked and actually active. So we'll go ahead and collapse that. Now to see this in effect, what we need is for part of this group or at least one object on this group to have some opacity. And the way this works is that it applies the opacity from one object to everything else in the group. I'm going to select just the text. So double click on this. So we've got just the text active and then go over to its opacity and set that down to zero. And I'm going to double click now anywhere in this gray space to get out of isolation mode. And we can see that we're, we're basically just seeing straight through that text. So it's essentially knocking out everything in the the layer. If I select the rectangle, so I click the little circle here on the rectangle to activate it, set its opacity down to let's say like 90, we can see that the top layer is overriding the less transparent layer underneath. So if I move the rectangle on top, the top layer is going to override everything underneath it. The transparency doesn't add up, it just goes from top to bottom. So if I move our text, which is completely transparent back on top, now we can see that it's gonna override everything that comes underneath it. Now, this is a really powerful tool because this transparency is not baked in to the appearance of our object, like you know, an alpha mask or something like that, but we can actually combine it with alpha mask. So if I go into the rectangle, which is still active, I'm gonna pop open my transparency panel, click make mask, I'm just going to uncheck clip so that it's just a, a white mask here. And I'm going to click on the mask so it's active. We should in the layers panel see that we're just in opacity mask. Go over to my primitives. I'm going to grab an ellipse and just from roughly about in the center of this planet, holding the option and shift key, drag that out so it kind of covers the planet. I'm going to hold space bar to reposition this. A little bit so it's more centered up with the planet and then just drag that out. Now if I set this to black since we're on the the transparency mask 
that's going to make this completely transparent. So we'll go into the fill color, we'll set it to black, and now we can see through it completely. Click out of this to get out of the group. And I'm just gonna uncheck the chain link here so that I can scale this rectangle without affecting the circle and can bring this in just a little bit like that. And I'm just gonna rearrange my text a little bit. So I'm gonna click on text, double click to get into isolation mode. And we'll go ahead and give it a question mark at the end there. I'm gonna click out of that and set that to left align so that it's kind of following the curvature of that planet there. Caveats. So there's one major caveat to working with knockout groups, and that is raster effects. It doesn't work as you'd expect with raster effects. So what does that mean? I'm gonna click on the text to activate that. So I've got the little circle active. I'm gonna click on effects here. And I'm just gonna click on, say, stylize round corners. Click OK, that should be fine. We can see it's it's working fine with round corners. We got this nice rounded text, that's fine. But if I go into effects and I add, say, stylize drop shadow, that's not at all what we expected. It's basically knocking out the entire so if you are trying to use something like Drop Shadow, Knockout Groups may not be your best bet. I'm gonna go ahead and go into my effects, turn that Drop Shadow off. And actually I'm gonna go ahead and turn off Rounded Corners. I kinda of liked it better without that Rounded Corners. So if you found this video helpful, if you learned something new about Adobe Illustrator, leave us a like and comment down below. If you'd like to get access to this project file, uh, ad free videos and just support the channel. I'll put a link to our Patreon down there in the description as well. For $5 a month, you get access to all of that stuff and also project files from previous projects. So you're essentially getting a stock library from everything that we've created in the past and free video. And you also get to support the channel, which is pretty cool. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.